Howdy ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson and I am a robotics teacher and today we're going to look at how do you program an EV3 robot to run multiple sensors at the same time. So this process is called multitasking. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it depending on what you want to accomplish with your robot. So let's say that I want my touch sensor um, to play a sound when it's touched. So one way I can do that is just bring the weight block and then change that to touch sensor compare state and then make sure it's port 2 it is port 2 and then I'll say alright so whenever the touch sensor is pressed number one I'm going to play a sound I can bring my sound block up here and I'll have it say hello and instead of connecting these right there I'm gonna pull these out keep these out a little bit and you can actually click and drag that so if I wanted to keep doing that every time that I push the touch sensor I'm gonna to have to put that in a loop So click there drag it over and then that way once it actually says hello it's gonna loop back around and wait again until the touch sensor is pressed now let's say I want to wait until my ultrasonic sensor sees something pretty close and then display something on the screen. So I can bring my weight block, change it from time, find my ultrasonic sensor. It is not the infrared. These are two different things even though they look sim similar. The ultrasonic sensor, compare, I can choose whether I want to do inches or centimeters. Let's do centimeters and I'm going to say, all right, if it's equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, I'm going to say less than or equal to 15 centimeters then I'm gonna bring my display block up this way and it's like well what do you want to show I can show an image I can click up here if I want to do a neutral image it looks like that um, or if I want to write something I can do text as well and then click right here where it says mind storms and then say watch out and then you might be wondering what it looks like if you click on this display preview you drag this down a little bit it says watch out you can also move the move this around the screen by clicking left right or on the little x-axis and then clicking on the y-axis and bringing it down um, and then I can also change the size to really small medium bold and then large and so I can actually click right up here and then drag it down so now when I click play this is going to be running and this is going to be running and then if I want it to continue to run I'm going to put that in a loop uh, but what might end up happening is it might just keep showing the watch out screen if I want the screen to get cleared maybe after two seconds of showing watch out I can put another dis I can put a wait block that says okay wait two seconds and then put another display block and then just say reset screen so then it will go blank and then it will be blank until it is less than or equal to 15 centimeters on the reading for the ultrasonic sensor and it'll say watch out again and so you can keep adding sensors like this and then just keep clicking and dragging and they'll all run at the same time let's download this see if this works so here's my touch sensor Okay, so that's running. And then here is my ultrasonic sensor. I'm gonna put my hand close to it and so you can see it. So currently it just says the mind storms. Once I get close, okay, watch out. So it did that, let's see if it's, and then it resets after two seconds. Watch out, resets after two seconds. Now the problem with this is that if you're using your sensors to control your motors and all of them are sending a signal to say do this to the motors, you're gonna get conflicting messages and the EV3 is not gonna know what to do or it's just gonna pick one of the messages to follow. So there's one other method of doing this. Let's do a new program. Let's call this multitasking two. So let me set something up real quick that will show you the conflict that'll happen. And so here I'm telling the robot go forward but and then if you see white back up and then if you if you're too if you're closer than 15 centimeters back up and turn around so I'm gonna push play it's currently moving forward and you can even see it on the program that the forward ones lighten up the weight blocks are waiting to see white and the ultrasonic is waiting to see less than 15 so what happens if I see less than 15 okay it's still going forward though and the problem is that first program is running and it says you told me to stay on and you told me to keep going 
And then even though the other brick is lit up, it's getting two different motor messages at the same time. So it's just gonna keep doing what the first message says. So let's figure out how we can actually fix that. So I'm gonna break all these off and then just move them off to the side. And we're gonna have to use a switch block here, which is down here. It's kind of like an if then statement. So we're gonna move this down and we can start out with, why don't we just start out with the color sensor? So it says color sensor, measure color. This one you're getting a couple different options between two different colors. You can change these colors if you see black and if you see white. And then the default case is if it doesn't see black or white, you can just, uh, you can make which one you want it to do if it doesn't see either of these colors. So I'll say default is black. And if you need to add another color, like if there's several things, you can just hit this add case button and say, well, what color do you wanna add? So this is what it's gonna do in these different situations. Let me move this down a little bit. So I'm gonna actually put white up here and black down here and make black my default. With white, I want it to turn around if it sees white. So I can actually just take this block over here and then paste it right there, copy paste. All right, so A and C, just go backwards if you see white. Otherwise, if you're seeing black, I want you to move forward. Um, but what I'm gonna have to do instead is say, all right, if you don't see white, I do want you still looking for this ultrasonic sensor uh, reading. So if it's less than 15. So I'm actually gonna put another switch block down here before I tell it to go straight. So now I've got two switch blocks. I can expand these out a little bit if I need some space. There we go. So now I'm gonna change this switch block to the ultrasonic sensor. I'm gonna compare centimeters. And I'm gonna say, all right, maybe you don't see white, but if you're gonna be down here, I want you to check, are you less than or equal to 15 centimeters? If you are, then let's copy this, paste it. Then I want you to back up and turn, turn a little bit to the right. If you're not, well now my last sensor, let's say if someone bumps my touch sensor, I wanna go to the left, my touch sensor's on the back. I'm gonna put another switch block in here. So, so far, let me move this down. I'm saying if you see white, go ahead and back up. If not, I want you to look to see what your ultrasonic sensor reads. If your ultrasonic sensor reads less than 15, I want you to back up. But if not, I want you to check one more thing before we decide to just go forward. If your touch sensor is pressed, this is number one, is pressed, I want you to make a hard left turn. I didn't make one earlier, so I'm just gonna make a, a new one here. I'm gonna make a hard left turn at 100 speed for one full rotation. So now, all three of these are gonna be happening at the same time. Well, not exactly at the same time, but they're gonna be happening so fast that it seems like they're going at the same time. If none of these things are true, if it doesn't see white, if the ultrasonic sensor isn't less than 15, if the touch sensor is not being pressed, then, and only then, do I want you to go forward. And I don't want you to go forward for a couple seconds, for a few rotations. I want you to just keep going forward. I want you to stay on, unless something happens here. Now, I need to put this entire thing inside one big loop, so that way, once it gets through here and none of those things are happening and it stays on, well, it's gonna stay on, but then it's gonna hit the end of the program and it's gonna be over. I want the whole thing continually looping over and over again. So, let's see if this works. I'm gonna slow these down for the sake of the tutorial down to 10. So let's do a few tests. Let's make sure it just goes forward pretty slowly. All right, so it's going forward. Let's see if the white color sensor works. All right, so it sees white and you can even see on the screen how it actually reads that. Let's see if the ultrasonic sensor works. Okay, good, it sees that and it's backing up. I'm gonna bring it back over here. I'm gonna press the touch sensor in the back, see what happens and it turns around. And then once it does the full rotation, it goes back to the instructions of what to do when none of the conditions for the sensors are being met. So that's two ways you can program your robot to run multiple sensors at the same time. There are other ways to do it, but I felt that these two were some of the more straightforward ways. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and good luck.